1642, Galileo, after a very, very interesting career, died. But all was not lost, because in 1642, Isaac Newton was born. And Isaac Newton will become probably the greatest scientist of all time. Now, Newton is famous for his apple. And allegedly, here's another one of these stories, which probably is not true, but Newton was sitting on an apple tree. And while he was sitting there, this apple fell and bonked him on the head. And Eureka, he immediately began to think, ah, the Earth gravity, what we call gravity, pulled the apple down off the tree, just like the Earth's gravity pulls the moon towards it, and that's why the moon is in orbit. He then went and did a series of equations, equations of motion, in which he could describe exactly the motion of the falling apple with the motion of the falling moon. And therefore, in one single wonderful streak, he was able to combine terrestrial mechanics with stellar mechanics. Because everything that happens on Earth, he could predict would happen in the heavens. He became so famous for this that he was almost like a rock star. Probably not during Newton's time, but a little later, they had something called the Gedanken experiment. Gedanken is the German word for thought. So maybe Galileo, when he was dropping balls from the Leaning Tower of Pisa, actually did a Gedanken experiment. So Newton would, with his laws of motion, would say, if you took an apple, Newton's favorite apple, and you threw it in the void of space, when there was nothing there at all, no planets, no stars, only the dark voidness of space, he would predict by the first law of motion that that apple would travel in a straight line forever, never changing. Now, let's put Jupiter. Now we have the apple moving towards Jupiter, and the apple now has a problem, because the apple wants to go in the direction that I threw it, but it's also being tugged by the gravity of Jupiter. Now, if the numbers were all correct, and the distance from Jupiter and the velocity of the apple was just the right, correct numbers, then the apple would go into orbit. And you have orbital mechanics. Now, the other experiment, which is a combination of Galileo and of Newton, for instance, if I took this apple now in this auditorium and I threw it as hard as I could out to the audience, how long from the time the apple left my hand would it hit the ground? Well, with the work of Newton and Galileo, you don't have to do that experiment because since the apple is continually being pulled by the Earth, even while it's traveling forward, it will hit the ground at exactly the same time as if I drop the apple here and it hits the ground, and I could just measure that. Now, if I had a gun, if I had a gun, thank you, and I was in a field with my trusty BB gun, and I would shoot the BB straight across the field, or I would drop the BB here. The BB in both cases would hit the ground simultaneously. 